NVIDIA has just lost half of its AI chip market in China, and the shock waves from this collapse are reverberating across the tech industry and geopolitical landscape alike. This development isn't just a story of market shifts or corporate rivalry. It represents the unraveling of a decade-long technological advantage and the rise of a new power determined to challenge the global AI hierarchy. For years, NVIDIA was untouchable in China. Its GPUs powered everything from the country's largest research institutions to tech startups and government surveillance infrastructure. It wasn't just a supplier, it was a pillar of China's AI ambitions. Its CUDA software platform had become so entrenched that transitioning to anything else was both technically and economically prohibitive. Developers were trained on it, code bases were built around it, and deep learning frameworks were optimized for it. CUDA wasn't just a tool, it was the ecosystem. By 2021, NVIDIA controlled an estimated 95% of China's AI accelerator market. Such dominance in one of the world's most strategically important sectors, artificial intelligence, was nothing short of astonishing. China's race to build the most powerful AI models, from large-scale language systems to national defense algorithms, NVIDIA was the de facto engine behind the scenes. But all of that changed in a flash. The U.S. government, increasingly wary of China's technological ascent, introduced sweeping export restrictions, targeting high-performance chips and the tools required to make them. NVIDIA's flagship A100 and H100 GPUs were banned from export to China. But Washington didn't stop there. Even chips specially engineered to comply with export limits, like the H20 and L40S, intentionally underpowered to meet U.S. regulations, were later caught in the expanding scope of sanctions. The message from the U.S. was unmistakable. Access to high-end computational power would no longer be taken for granted. This policy sent a shock through the heart of China's AI ecosystem. Companies that had once relied on NVIDIA hardware as a given suddenly found themselves scrambling for alternatives. For NVIDIA, the impact was equally disruptive. Unable to deliver its top-tier products, the company was forced to rely on lower-tier offerings and uncertain workarounds. Within months, its once ironclad hold on the Chinese market began to erode, not gradually, but catastrophically. That void was not left empty for long. In the shadows of international sanctions and industrial pessimism, Huawei had been quietly building a response, a domestic alternative to NVIDIA's dominance. Many had counted Huawei out after the company was hit with aggressive sanctions targeting its 5G networks and smartphone business. Its consumer electronics business took a massive hit. Supply chains were severed, access to advanced chip fabrication nodes was blocked, and yet, rather than collapse, Huawei adapted. Redirecting its focus inward, the company invested heavily in AI chip design. Its Ascend series, initially overlooked, began evolving at a rapid pace. 910B and 910C were solid, but it was the arrival of the 910D that truly changed the game. Despite the limitations of working with legacy 7M process technology, due to restrictions on EUV lithography machines from ASML, Huawei managed to extract astonishing performance from its designs. Early benchmarks leaked from research institutions showed the 910C delivering around 60% of the inference performance of NVIDIA's H100, a remarkable feat for a chip developed entirely under sanctions. But more recent tests using the 910D revealed something even more dramatic. Huawei's newest chip could match, and in certain AI tasks, even outperform the H100. These were not theoretical metrics. Huawei's Cloud Matrix 384 architecture, powered by these Ascend chips, delivered results that surpassed NVIDIA's GPU-based SQLang platform in key large language model inference scenarios. And this performance edge wasn't achieved through brute force alone. Quali's strategy was multi-pronged and highly disciplined. With its Da Vinci architecture, the company focused on optimizing workloads specific to Chinese enterprise and research use cases. It emphasized system-level integration, power efficiency, and workload-specific acceleration. These chips weren't general-purpose behemoths. They were smart, targeted, and ruthlessly efficient. On the pricing front, Huawei made a bold move. Its chips were priced significantly lower than NVIDIA's, offering Chinese companies a compelling total cost of ownership. 
In an economy increasingly focused on self-reliance, that mattered. But price alone wasn't the hook. Huawei knew that to truly compete with NVIDIA, it had to challenge CUDA, something no company had done successfully. That's where Mindspore came in. Huawei's open-source AI framework wasn't just a symbolic gesture. It was a serious, well-funded alternative designed to replicate and eventually rival CUDA's reach. With the release of Mindspore 2.3 RC1, Huawei introduced major improvements in high-performance training across massive distributed systems, integrated inference training frameworks, and performance optimization for large foundation models. Chinese developers began flocking to it not because they had to, but because it was getting better, fast. To make adoption even easier, Huawei open-sourced its Pangu AI models. These weren't toy projects. They were industrial-grade models developed for enterprise, government, and scientific applications. By encouraging developers to build on, Huawei was constructing not just a chip business, but a parallel universe of AI tooling that was increasingly immune to external disruption. Behind all of this was the weight of the Chinese state. Massive public funding, state-backed labs, and government directives to reduce foreign dependency turned Huawei's efforts into a national imperative. Domestic firms, once reliant on NVIDIA, were now incentivized, in some cases required, to shift their infrastructure to Chinese suppliers. The result was a market undergoing one of the fastest transitions in modern tech history. By mid-2025, NVIDIA's market share in China had collapsed from 95% to just around 50%. That's not a cyclical downturn, that's an existential loss. It's not just a business failure, it's a geopolitical consequence. But the story is far from over. Huawei's greatest challenge isn't design, it's production. Without access to cutting-edge foundries and EUV technology, scaling up chip volume remains its Achilles heel. U.S. officials estimate Huawei will only be able to produce around 200,000 advanced AI chips in 2025. That might sound like a lot, but China's projected demand is over 1.5 million. Still, the mere fact that Huawei can produce any chips of this caliber under such intense restrictions is causing alarm in Washington and Silicon Valley alike. In response, NVIDIA is adjusting. The company is designing newer, even more restricted versions of its chips to try to regain access to Chinese clients. At the same time, it's deepening its global footprint, accelerating innovation through architectures like Blackwell and working with hyperscalers across the world. Google, Amazon, Meta, and Microsoft are all exploring or deploying their own silicon as well. The AI hardware race is no longer a one-on-one -on -one rivalry. It's a multi-front global competition. Still, what's unfolding in China marks a permanent turning point. The country is now irreversibly on a path toward domestic AI self-sufficiency. The days of one-sided reliance on U.S. chipmakers are over. China is building its own AI stack. Chips, software, models, infrastructure, and it's doing so with a sense of urgency shaped by years of technological containment. This shift has consequences far beyond China's borders. The global tech world is fragmenting. Two distinct ecosystems are forming, one led by the United States, rooted in open global collaboration but restricted by security concerns, the other led by China, more centralized, state-backed, and increasingly inward-looking. What started as a commercial rivalry is becoming a digital cold war, one defined not just by who has the best chip, but by who controls the future of intelligence itself. Access to compute is power, control over AI infrastructure is sovereignty, and the fight for both is just beginning. Now the question is no longer whether Huawei can compete, it's whether NVIDIA can hold its global dominance in a world that is dividing, recalibrating, and accelerating at breakneck speed. What happens next will shape the next decade of AI development and potentially the future of global power itself.